There are usually three types of lighting scenarios that you might want to consider depending upon the type of rendering you're going to do. The first lighting scheme I'll talk about is for when I want to apply textures to my model. I want to give myself the ability to see the textures that I am applying to that model in the best possible light. By default, Moto starts every empty scene with a directional light. While okay for modeling tasks, this is not ideal for use when applying textures. The directional light mimics the harsh light of the outdoor sun and casts hard shadows and should only be considered in certain lighting circumstances. In the texturing phase of creating a model, I usually find it best to add two area lights to the scene, converting the default directional light to an area light and keeping the default luminance settings. Area lights are ideal in that they scatter light rays in a more random fashion, therefore the illumination looks more pleasing to the eye, creating smoother contours and softer shadows. I'll usually position this light directly above the model, then I'll add a second area light just behind the camera to act as a key. This gives me a relatively flat shading motif. However, depending upon the type of textures that you're applying to your object, you may want to switch off the key light to allow a single overhead light to show more volume to your object. It's worth mentioning that by default, global illumination is also active. That is, the environment is also contributing to the illumination of the scene. Therefore, you can turn off all your lights and your model will still be visible to the camera in the rendering. I recommend leaving global illumination always on. However, you can switch off the environment to add more drama to the scene, which we'll explore a little later. Lighting for a presentation is a slightly different scenario. This is usually when you want to show your design to someone for approval, usually management or a client. In this case, you want to add a little drama to the environment without distracting from the product itself. That is to say, you don't generally want to have a lot of things going on in the background that can draw the eye away from the main subject. Generally, I keep my environment simple and limit my lights to just what's needed to highlight what's important in the product. In this example, I've lit my scene with just two area lights and two spotlights that have a narrow focus and sit just behind the shoe to produce a rim lighting effect that will define the edge of the contour. Notice how the spotlights add subtlety to the ground plane without actually distracting from the shoe itself. If your model has shiny or reflective surfaces, you may want to add a reflecting card in your scene that can help define a contour, but stay out of sight of the camera. With Moto, you can simply add a shader to the card's materials and tell the render not to render the card or allow it to cast shadows. The third lighting scheme is rendering for marketing or product visualization. This is where you pull out all the stops. You'll want to add the most drama that you can to that product. In these examples, you can see the use of different lighting techniques, including HDR or high dynamic range background images to illuminate the product. Here is where you become the photographer, adding camera effects such as depth of field and bokeh. While Moto ships with some very interesting tools to help facilitate this process, there are a whole host of third-party kits, such as Richard Yacht's Instant Lighting Kit and 9B Studio's Slick Lighting Kit. So I urge you to take the time to explore all the possibilities with lighting and rendering, because with Moto's rendering, the sky's the limit. 